So with the amount of crossovers I've driven on my channel already, is this Geely Coolery Sport now in danger? Let's find out. So hello guys, welcome back to my channel. So before we continue on with the review, I'd like to thank everyone for 6,000 subscribers. So yes, I'm a bit late to the party already for a 6K sub special, but this will be a three-part series for 6K subs. Again, late to the party too with this review since I have not actually done a facelift model of this Geely Coolery. So anyways, what I have here is the 2023 Geely Coolery Sport SE. So this is one of the top of the line models here of the Coolery variants here in the Philippines. So remember, this is the sport van. So I did a premium special edition GT way back last year. So I'd like to thank everyone here again, Ajili Makati to Miss Via and to Sir Reggie for making this review possible. Since I did a review of the GX3 Pro last week, that's kind of popular now too on my channel. So what I have here is probably one of my favorite subcompact crossovers ever. So I already mentioned its competitor, the GS3 M Zoom, and there are a lot more. So like example, the HRV V Turbo and the Challenge CS. 35 plus so i want to drive this again to see how it fares out and yet again this is not clickbait if it's still in danger because a lot of its competition already caught up with this cool rig. so being the se facelift model so everything now here at front looks i gotta say much better than the pre-facelift model there's a lot of red accents here including here on the grill there's like two i don't know why there's only two red dots here on the grill itself you have a carbon fiber chin now with red trims here on the splitter the ground clearance is exactly the same at 180 millimeters so here on the side profile you get carbon fiber ish trim here on the side mirror since this being the sport brand these have heating functions or defogging functions for the side mirror and two you get black wheels now that wasn't present in the pre-facelift model too before and speaking of red accents there's a lot more here on the side profile well you cannot see it that much on this vermilion red color but in other colors yeah you can see a lot of the red accents so here you have a two-tone blackout roof it's all present in every variant of the coolie as well this is the only variant too that has a sunroof so not much going on here on the side profile but it's just more of the face itself so powering this Julie Cool Ray, well, it's still the same, but it's one of the most proven engines that we have here in the Philippines. Well, in its class, no? Yet again, this is still powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged 3 cylinder engine that produces 177 horsepower and 255 newton meters of torque. And this one is still mated to a 7 speed wet type dual clutch transmission. So, hopefully, the next generation or the next facelift model, we will get the 4 cylinder turbocharged engine. So, I'm not sure when that will come here in the Philippines. So, still, this 3 cylinder has a lot up its sleeve comparing with its competition yet again. Since the 0 to 100 kilometers per hour time is done in 7.9 seconds which is still among one of the fastest ones in this class so here now at the rear of this Geely Cooley SE well the design language looks exactly the same like with the preface lift model and unique too in this class of subcompact crossovers you have a carbon fiber ish diffuser over here with red accents but you have quad exhaust pipes of course it won't sound as loud as like some supercars or sports cars but this is very tunable and it will become loud if you go to this guy shout out to drift motor speedway and drift exhaust so anyways so only thing that's been done here at the rear is this aggressive looking spoiler now there's an s logo here yet again and a carbon fiber spoiler too so i gotta be honest only it's not my taste it looks a bit I don't know what riced out but that's just my two cents only so to the boot space is exactly the same so with all of the seats up you have 330 liters and of course it will double if you fold them all down so yeah that's about it with the engine the exterior and the boot of this coolery se sport let's check out the interior so this is the interior of the coolery se sport um yeah, it looks exactly the same like with the preface lift model. Literally nothing has been touched here at all, but still I'll walk you through it anyway. So here in the door card, I love all the materials here. You get red and black leather here for your elbows. And I love this brushed aluminum trim here that stretches all the way in the door handle. And like what I said in the Coolway Sport Limited review that I've done almost two years ago now, my favorite part is the door handle. It looks very much like Porsche's, I gotta say. And 
Then here in the left side of the dashboard, you have an air conditioning vent. And then few buttons for your headlight leveler adjustment. And then your electronic stability control button. I forgot that button existed here in the left side since I have not sat in a coolie in a long time. So here in the sting, exactly the same too. You have your cruise control and phone connectivity buttons on the left side and on the right side you have your volume adjustments and digital instrument cluster buttons here on the right side and my favorite feature and sorry the only variant of the coolie and it's my favorite feature are these plastic paddle shifters so can't wait to dive this yet again so the seats too it's fabric above here mixed with leather but of course being a coolie it's more on the sportier side of things so you get electronic adjustments for the driver's seat and too since being a facelift model you get an s logo here and then above here you have again your sunroof the controls and your lights are above here along with the sunglasses holder visor you have a vanity mirror with light but sadly this car is low but that's why it's not opening Still don't extend but the sun visor material is very good. So here you have your instrument cluster with a lot of adjustments yet again. And then here you have your infotainment system. Sadly there's still no Apple CarPlay and Android Auto but you still have that Bluetooth phone mirror link. And then your cameras of course it's a cooler. It's as good as before. And then below the infotainment system you have your air conditioning vents along with your knobs and buttons right down below. And then there's a cubby space here just down below, just about fits my phone. And yet again, this is what's unique with all coolers in the first place. It's just the, I don't know, the ambiance here in the interior. I mean, it just feels so premium than usual given its price point. We'll get to that again later on. I mean, all the materials here feel very, very good. This is what's Geely is known for in the first place. Even with the rest of the Geely cars here available here in the Philippines. I mean... They're all squidgy material above here on the dashboard, they're red too. And then you get this brushed aluminum trim that stretches all the way to the right side of the passenger side. Yeah, just it just feels so special in here, I gotta say. And then here, glove box. Okay, that's pretty small. Here in your center console, so you have your gear lever along with a lot of buttons for your driving modes and for your assist yet again for like... Oh yes, so I forgot all about that feature already since it's been a while. So this sport van is the only one that has the park assist. This can parallel park itself. But I will not demo that for obvious reasons yet again. Sorry guys. And then further behind, you have two cup holders and then a cubby space. Kind of useless to put a phone there, gotta be honest. And what I think I missed two years ago too, below the center console, you have two USB ports, a 12 volt socket, and an extra storage yet again for your phone. And then here on the right side of the center console, you have a grab handle. Even this feels nice to the touch. And then here, center console box. Okay, the space is pretty decent. Oh yeah, so carried over from the previous Sport Limited variant, these have now ventilated seats. So yeah i'm gonna have a cold ass when i get to test drive one of these later so since we're here already the rear seats it's exactly the same like before too and then you have one usb port here in the middle along with the cubby space and then there are two map pockets on either side and then as you can see here there's a central armrest with two cup holders and space there in the back just as good as before sadly not much going on there at there even at the door card it's exactly the same like the ones in front. You still have the brushed aluminum trims over there. And then there are two LED lights on either side at the rear. So yeah, that's about it here in the interior of this Cooley Sport SE. Let's go for a drive. So driving this Cooley Sport SE yet again. So remember, it's been two years since I've driven one of these. And yet again, I feel so at home with this. Cool, eh? Remember to the ground clearance is well it's exactly the same like with its competition so getting off the ramp here you won't have an issue whatsoever so here we're just in eco mode and then manual mode and then... oh my gosh <laughs> right the performance just as good as before <laughs> Let's put you to normal mode at the moment. So, yeah, like what I said, is this cool re in danger against with its competition? So, well, in terms of the performance, I gotta be honest, it's still one of the best ones in its class. Of course, I did praise the M Zoom GS3 a lot, well, especially the R style. However, there's one thing that I will take this over that for one feature alone. It's the paddle shifters. I mean, that's what's missing with the M Zoom 
hours that I got to be honest this something engaging that I like when you have manual mode but still overall though diving dynamics wise I think this is still among the best one in its class so I mean NVH and then but you don't hear much of suspension thug yeah there's something with this coolie that uh, every time you dive it makes you feel so special maybe it's the engine of course and yet yeah, as well being a three-cylinder engine it sounds pretty good too that's what's unique to with three-cylinder engines and speaking of driving this already for quite a while now and it, the engine being warmed up already you don't feel much of the three-cylinder shroudered not to my surprise of course Gilly no do know what they're doing then two what else to talk about with this Vika so let's try out a bit more since I've driven way back two years ago in very smooth roads so here around in Pasang Tomo let's try a bit with rougher roads since there's a lot of holes here on the roads and then brake field just as good too and then yes the power wise against with its competition I mean yeah again it's put its power down with ease and driving overall not just performance you all know me I'm spoiled for performance I mean here just driving around 50 kilometers per hour NVH is pretty good, not much tire noise too. And then as well, don't forget with the safety features with this Cooley Sport SE. I mean, yeah, you feel so safe. Yeah, a little bit of a nitpick again, there's no Apple CarPlay under the auto, but then again, it does the job. So, really going over metal sheets and then a bit of holes here. Yeah, it does the job too. So, here now, let's try sport mode. Of course, sport mode, you can feel the the car more eager to move forward now so here roll out wow right, right. enough <laughs> and then higher speeds too i did notice too there's a little bit of tire noise now but then again it's not so bad so i'm just gonna leave it as sport mode just to have fun and then here handling okay pretty good too and then metal sheet too and then more holes over here right. so another characteristic too with this wet type dual clutch transmission it's not jerky but it's here pull in manual mode oh my gosh yeah as well too i notice in sport mode it will tend to hang on the gears for quite longer of course to put all the power down so just pull it back to eco since I'm barely on that uh, driving mode all the time. So here in this gas station, I always test out the suspension here. Right, so far so good. So here's this rumble strip here. Right. That's so comfortable. So against with this competition to well, okay, I did say I, with the M Zoom GST, I noticed this is a little bit more comfortable than that one. Although, yes, this suspension too is firm, but it's not too firm like I mean not like with the sports car but it's a bit softer than that of the competition I have to say and then visibility all around actually pretty good too so the corner windows actually pretty handy too and then here eco mode and then just floor it okay just a little bit of a delay but once you get going wow that's so good <laughs> all right and as well in manual mode, if you're just eco or normal, the response of the transmission is just a little bit delayed only. That's why I always leave it in sport mode. Oh, yeah, I miss driving this good race sport. So I cannot wait now if they'll bring the what the facelift or next generation cool race sport, the one with the four cylinder turbocharged engine and with the brand new face. So I really can't wait on how that will drive. Of course, I will miss this three-cylinder engine because yet again, as I said, it sounds really, really good for what this is. And you notice too, there's not much pump in audio too. I mean, some of its uh, crossover competitors don't even have pump in audio, but some of them do, like with the Honda HRV Turbo. This one is just a natural sound. Of course, this is the drawback of this cooler sport against with this competition. You know me, I'm a sporty kind of driver. Yeah, the fuel consumption alone here since this is the second or third test drive of today it's been averaging five kilometers per liter okay okay i can do better than that but this is the fuel economy that i've been getting at the moment remember i did 6.7 to 7 kilometers per liter way back with the sport limited two years ago so let's try normal mode now okay response time of the transmission throttle is a little bit better but overall 
I got nothing much to say because it's exactly the same like with the Sport Limited that I reviewed two years ago. But having given yet again the amount of crossovers in between that and today for almost two years, yep, this is still one of the best ones out there. And two, let's not forget the price of this. This one cost one million two hundred and ninety nine thousand pesos, which is I gotta say a steal because. You almost got everything already. Yes, there's still no Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, but you can do it anyway here via the QD link. And as too, this is one of the safest cars too on the roads too. So yeah, that's all I have to say with this Cooley Sport SE. So I'd like to thank everyone here again, Ajili Makati, to Miss Via, and to Sir Reggie over here who assisted me here in this test drive. So <laughs> hope you guys like and subscribe and I will see you with more future car reviews and thank you all too for 6,000 subscribers bye bye